So today we're working on hold fasts for my workbench, which a friend of mine is finishing up for me. Paul will be delivering my bench this afternoon, and Christopher and I are going to try to get um, at least one hold fast done by the time he gets here. So we've cleaned out the woodworking shop. It's the first time in my life I've had a dedicated woodworking space, and we've got um, bricks set. Eventually the floor won't be dirt, it'll be wood pavement, but for now it's dirt. So we've set bricks um, to set the workbench on. We've got those leveled and we'll put these pieces of flashing on top of the bricks to keep the wood from touching the dirt. Bench is going to go up against the wall right here under this beautiful window. So this is um, this is plate 11 from Andre Rubeau's The Art of the Cabinet Maker. Um, from 1769 and Rubo was a French um, joiner I believe so he was an actual tradesman and um, he wrote some books that, that he learned to illustrate to illustrate his own books um, about his trade so this bench is uh, the inspiration for the bench that we're building that Paul's finishing for me and um, this is the hold fast. It's an ancient, nobody really knows how old, an ancient um, method of work holding, kind of a clamp. And Rubo specifies that the hold fasts be, he kind of gives a range of sizes for the hold fasts. Um, he, he, he specifies, if you translate the measurements, I think it works out to about uh, the shank to be between an inch and a sixteenth and an inch and five sixteenths um, thick, 18 to 20 inches long, and with the head or the crook, um, eight to 10 inches long. So I've, I have um, taken this sketch, I, I, this is not a sketch, this is actually a tracing. I blew plate 11 up on my computer screen and traced the hold fast, um, just the part that I need out and I blew it up to the bottom end of Rubo's specified size range. So I'm going for about an inch diameter shank and um, this this size head. So this is about eight inches across here. And um, this is quite a, an interesting forging. There's a lot of material in this corner here. This is fully two inches across. And so we're actually, that's, that's a bit much to upset. So we're actually gonna start with one by two inch bar stock and draw out the leg and the crook away from the corner. We'll leave the material for the corner. So I, I've done this a couple of times before in smaller material, but never quite on this scale. So I have Christopher here to swing the sledge Provide he'll be doing the real work, <laughs> the hard work. But anyway, um, we're going to attempt to make two of these, but at least one today. So I've got the got the material in the fire. I'm going to put this drawing here. I should have should have taken the time to make a sheet metal template because uh, I could lay that straight on the forging without burning the paper. But anyway, whatever, it'll be fine. Travis. Can you crank it up? So the first thing I'm going to do is I have this big pair of tongs. These are set for, oh, I don't remember, inch and a half square, I think. So I don't really have a pair of tongs suitable for this size and shape of bar stock. Yep, keep, keep cranking. We're not near hot enough. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to forge one end of this bar I'm going to forge a stub of it down to one inch square, which I'll then be able to hold really well in my one inch tongs. And then we'll go from there. But this is a big bar. It's going to take uh, some serious heating. We're going to, we're going to go through a, quite a bit of coal this afternoon. All right, Travis, you can quit. Stop cranking wrong tongs.
we might have got it a little undersized, but that won't that won't hurt anything. All right. So that'll give me something to hang on to better with these tongs. Oh yeah. Now I have to figure out about how much material to pull out from this corner. Travis, you're stealing the show. Tongs are coming off. All right, go. That's moving some metal. We still using cross pin or you need to swap them to the face for this? Um, I guess, I guess we'll do the, um, we'll do the flat face and we'll use the edge a little bit, kind right. of alternate, just a little bit less aggressively. We'll right. just try to clean things up. <laughs> the short one is an eight pounder, the short one, Right in the middle of those three. That one. That one. All right. If I could just hold it in one spot. Looks like my workbench is coming. Perfect. Well, <laughs> no, there's a few things. <laughs> yeah, one, one thing is a few of the joints were reverse drawboard. Oh. <laughs> totally rookie okay. mistake. Okay. You know, one one thing I want to do though before we set it in place mm -hmm. is um, I want to chamfer the bottoms of these holes because yeah. I'm really scared that the holdfasts are gonna like really chunk the wood out. Mm -hmm. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this with this chisel. Do you have the hold fast already? <laughs> oh. Working on it right now. We are we are working on it. I think we we might be able to finish it by five. All right, let's go see if we can get this, make a little more progress on this hold fast. Hey, y'all don't pester Paul. Ah. So 
So the trick to getting something nice and round is to forge it nicely square first and then nicely octagonal with all the flats of the octagon being even before you knock off the corners and round it up. All right, let's get this monster out. Paul! Yeah. The whole bench is backwards. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my goodness! That was not funny. <laughs> All right, that's good. There she be. There she be. Look at how perfect the light is on this bench. Um, north facing we window, even though it's getting, it's starting to get dark here, the light is going down, but it's still really, really nice and light on the bench for anything you want to do. All right, split much wood. Yeah, good bit. You hit a lot of wedges. If you're wondering if I'm going to miss. <laughs> you need a lantern. No. No, you're not going to miss? No, I'm not going to miss. Okay. <laughs> hey, Travis, you need to either get your glasses on or go away, okay? Being a parent makes you feel like a bureaucrat, and I really, that's the only thing about parenting I don't care for. <laughs> Too many rules. Even got them lit. Boy, that one's running away. Huh? I want him to, but I also want to get done. <laughs> You're doing good. You're doing good. Try three. What's that? Try three of us. <laughs> I've done it once before. No. Hey, you. why don't why don't we do that? Why don't we do the two of you? Why don't, why don't we do the two of you? Right. We'll do all three. Just take it slow and just right. follow each other. Um, you use this hammer. Yeah. It's a little heavier, yeah. um, which means you can have more power without having to swing faster. Yeah. Still retaining control. Right. Gotta wait for a signal. All right, now I'm gonna try to make the corner. Christopher, you think you can do that? There you go, there you go. Do it to it. All right, now hit up there. There you go. Just don't miss. Nice, accurate blows. Beautiful. I'm trying to stay away from that corner That's good. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Woo! Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Time for water.
just me at the moment. I was like, who is like not going fast enough and it's me. <laughs> Have you ever seen the TV show The Woodrat Shot? Roy Underhill. Please tell me. No? What? Goodness. What is wrong with your parents? So I know y'all have watched This Old House. Yeah. That like yeah. that's your dad's favorite show. Like, the Woodwright Shop is right there. Like it, it's um, Roy oh. Underhill, okay. and it's it's all hand tool stuff. And anyway, it's it's really good. Where is it? There it is. Go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Take another heat. Well, I do think it's close enough to be called a Rubo Holdfast. That makes me happy. I meant to make up a sheet metal, like glue this to a piece of sheet metal and cut it out so I would have an exact template. Yep. And I, I will probably do that in the future. Yeah, I know I will definitely do that. Yeah. You just can't really lay a hot piece of metal on a paper template. You could. <laughs> you could. I've gotten awfully close before. I've got like drawings yeah. with, with scorch marks on them. <laughs> Y'all want to do it once. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. This is that same old recurring theme of it's not that hard to make something that looks fairly close. It's really a pain in the neck to make something that looks really close. Reproduction is harder than imitation. Ouch, that's hot. All right, so we've played with the geometry of this thing a little bit and filed the shank with some very rough coarse filing just to kind of smooth it out a little bit and yet still have some texture to give us better contact. Holds quite nicely and it looks just like our drawing. We're pretty close. That's going to be nice for all kinds of stuff.